Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, so I've got uh, some slides here to update you on the, uh, the digital twin hub. Uh, there's lots more that I'd like to say about the Digital Framework Task Group, but I'm trying to constrain myself to the, uh, to the scope uh, and give you this, uh, this update. Um, but what I'm wanting to do in this time uh, is to really show how the DT Hub is a, a core part of the journey towards a national digital twin uh, and to show that Daphne really is at the heart of that. So that question we had just before the break uh, about the connection between them, uh, hopefully uh, I'll start to answer that question. Uh, and where this all comes from, uh, like Jim just said, uh, is the data for the public good report that came from the National Infrastructure Commission about 18 months ago. Uh, and in that, it made all sorts of fantastic recommendations. But if I summarise the, uh, the high-level recommendations, uh, I think it comes down to these. Uh, firstly, that we move towards having a national digital twin. Uh, secondly, that we put in place an information management framework to facilitate that. Uh, and thirdly, that we bring together key people from across government and academia and industry uh, to facilitate the information management framework, to facilitate the national digital twin. Uh, and that's what we've been doing. Uh, so following uh, the approval of the recommendations by the uh, HM Treasury last July, the Digital Framework Task Group has been established. Uh, and since then, there's a number of things that we've been doing. Uh, firstly, we published the Gemini principles, and I won't spend long on this. I did notice there are a few copies outside. If you get interested by them, grab one and read it through. Um, but I'll introduce them very briefly. Uh, we've also developed a roadmap which maps out the first three years of what could potentially be a 30-year journey, uh, but you can't map 30 years. What we can do is map the first three years. Uh, and uh, the idea of that is really to get us off the ground so that we can keep flying. And the third thing we've done is establish this digital twin hub, the DT hub. Uh, and you'll recognise the smiling face there of uh, Sam Cholton, who has very kindly agreed to be the chair of the steering group for the DT hub. So you can immediately see that there's already a connection with Daphne. Uh, so what the Gemini principles do uh, is introduce the high-level definitions. What do we mean by a digital twin and what do we mean by a national digital twin? Uh, they also inter introduce uh, a number of values that we think should inform us on the journey. If this is a multi-decade, multi-generational journey, then we need something to hand across the baton that remains. Uh, and so uh, what we did was, in consultation with a, a wide group of stakeholders, is develop these uh, values-based principles that we think can be relatively constant. Technology will change, but we think that the values should inform us on the whole journey. Uh, so I'd really commend that to you. Uh, we'd still like feedback on the Gemini principles. We can still do addition to, uh, but uh, do engage with, with those. Uh, and the definition that we came up with, the digital twin, won't be a surprise to you because it's uh, doing the rounds now. I think uh, lots of people are becoming more and more familiar with what a digital twin is. And effectively, it's just a digital representation of something physical. But what makes a digital twin uh, a twin rather than just any other model is the two-way connection, the data going one way and interventions going the other. So data coming from the physical twin that can then be used to develop insights that then inform decisions, that then can feed back via interventions uh, to drive outcomes. And something that I think is very attractive about this description is that it embodies an information value chain. It shows us that there is this direct connection between data and outcomes. It's the outcomes that we want, and it's the data that we have to start that journey. Uh, but it goes through insights and, crucially, decisions, because we see it's making better decisions faster and cheaper is what actually unlocks the value. So that's very good for an individual digital twin. Uh, and what we're seeing is that uh, already large organisations are developing digital twins of bits of their own um, assets or processes or systems for their own benefit. And that's a very good thing because the business case has been made and people are wanting to move that forward. But what is even more interesting uh, is the connection between twins. And so you can see that within the context of an individual organisation, it might make sense to connect twins up. So, for example, if we're talking about a water company and there's a digital twin of a water treatment works, it kind of makes sense that there would be a connection between that and the, and the distribution network. And there might be a connection between that and the wastewater treatment network, and between that and the wastewater treatment. 
And you can see that there are multiple water treatment works and multiple wastewater treatment works. And so you can see that connections between twins ends up being potentially valuable. And what connects twins is data. Uh, but that's just within the context of an individual organisation. And if we're convinced that it does make sense to make some kind of connection between twins, and we recognise that what's doing it is secure, resilient data sharing, then it also would make sense to share data across organisational boundaries. And so within the context, again, of the water industry, you know, that might be between water companies, or it might be between water companies uh, and Ofwat, or water companies uh, and the EA, or water companies and a water resource model. So you can see that there'd be real value in this secure, resilient data sharing across organisational boundaries. But that's just within one sector. So if we then zoom back out again, it kind of makes sense that there might be this uh, secure, resilient data sharing across sector boundaries, uh, because we see that there's obviously a connection between the energy sector and basically everything else, likewise for telecoms. Uh, and so we can see that there could be real value in making connections between digital twins uh, at a sector level as well. And so effectively, this is what we're talking about for a national digital twin. It's not one massive model of everything. It's an ecosystem of connected twins. And what enables those connections? Secure, resilient data sharing. It's all about interoperability. And Daphne needs that same interoperability because Daphne is hungry for data. Uh, and where can that data come from? Essentially, uh, it's from uh, within these sectors where there would be people curating the data. So you don't just have um, a copy of data that goes dead. Uh, you can have curated data uh, updates. So that's the, that's the idea. And I think you can immediately see uh, a, a logical, totally rational connection between this uh, and Daphne. Uh, but let me explain a little bit more as, as to where I see you know, Daphne really playing a part. And, and that's uh, to do with our DT hub. Uh, and to introduce this, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the kind of approach we might take at a national level uh, to facilitate secure, resilient data sharing across organisational boundaries um, and, and to facilitate this kind of consist consistency in data. Uh, and I, I think there are two big ways of getting it wrong. At one end of the, uh, the spectrum, one extreme, would be that we could lock some experts away in a room for a while and ask them to come up with a perfect solution and then impose it on the industry. And you can kind of already feel why that wouldn't work because the experts might not come up with the right solution. They'd probably take too long doing it. And then when they tried to impose it, industry would not like it because we don't like things being imposed on us, do we? So the top-down authoritarian approach wouldn't work. But then at the other end of the spectrum, you can imagine a more Darwinian approach of just letting everybody do their own thing. And in this approach, uh, you, it would be like um, allowing a jungle uh, and uh, whatever ends up being the tallest wins. Uh, but it might not be the right thing that, that, that wins. Uh, you know, it needs some kind of direction. Uh, and also, the thing about Darwinian-style evolution is it just takes too long as well. Uh, so both extremes wouldn't work, but we can see good things in each because the expert uh, view it would be really important, but also the bottom-up learning from experience and trying is very important too. Uh, and so the approach that is emerging uh, for this uh, development of the, the National Digital Twin and this data sharing is really to bring those two things together in what we've called the DT Hub, the Digital Twin Hub, uh, which is where the practitioners live and they learn by doing, uh, those who are owning and developing digital twins coming together in a collaborative community to learn off each other so they don't all fall down the same holes, um, but also where um, experience can be not just gained, but best practice identified, that best practice turned into guidance, the guidance turned into standards. And that's where the experts come in, uh, in what we're calling the commons. So what we're seeing the commons as is a national resource um, of what is needed to unlock this secure, resilient data sharing across the whole industry. Uh, and the DT Hub is wanting to bring into it uh, all those uh, who are developing digital twins uh, to share their lessons. But then what is identified and put into the commons uh, as this minimum that's needed to enable secure, resilient data sharing, um, that needs to be shared widely. Uh, and we see that it's this connection between them that effectively becomes the forge. It becomes a forge for standards 
uh, and it also becomes a forge for the kind of experience that feeds into use cases, that feeds into future business cases, that enables um, more digital twins to be developed uh, as we go forwards. Um, and so if we look at the objectives of this DT Hub, uh, and remind you that Sam is the chair of the steering group for this, um, are, are many. And I won't run through, uh, through each of these, but just to pick off a few of these key objectives. I mean, certainly there's the learning and experience sharing. And we can see that in the early days of the DT Hub, that will be very important. Uh, but then showcasing the benefits um, and creating case studies we see as being essential to enable a snowball to start rolling. Because those who are already developing digital twins are getting really good experience. Uh, and then there's others kind of standing on the edge of the swimming pool wondering whether to jump in or not. Uh, and they kind of need some, uh, some real life experience to take to their boards. So you can see that that sharing across would be, become really important. Uh, but also creating a support network uh, to facilitate uh, the solving of, of problems. Um, and uh, also what we anticipate is that there'll be many different types of, um, of digital twins for many different purposes. Uh, and so what we would like to do is create a register of digital twins. And in doing that, we can identify some gaps where there are some pilots which are, are required. And we imagine that that will particularly be about the, the data sharing across twins. Um, and so we can identify the gaps uh, and then bring in funding to, uh, to, to fill those gaps. Uh, and so what this can do um, is test the Gemini principles. It can also, uh, as I said, be a forge for the information management framework. And those two things together uh, can lead us towards the, the national digital twin. So I've described this connection between the commons and the DT hub as a, as a kind of an essential forge for the national digital twin. Uh, but in many ways, it's not quite enough. Uh, we need also uh, some things to feed into it and feed out of it. Uh, so the overall approach, which I've talked about, we uh, are working on that r uh, right now uh, to feed into how we make the connection between the Commons and the DT Hub. Uh, but also we need governance, uh, understanding the governance uh, that, that needs to be put in place, not just for the development of the information management framework, but the ongoing maintenance of it, uh, an ongoing management of secure, resilient data sharing uh, across organisational boundaries. And you can see that that might be different in different sectors, but we need to give some real good thought uh, into what the governance would look like for data sharing. Um, and then we also need feeding out from the, uh, um, from the forge um, some addressing of enablers, where uh, there could be blockers that we can identify. Uh, we need to specifically look for what those blockers are before they become blockers uh, and then mitigate them. So that's what the enabling stream is about. Uh, and then the change stream, finally, uh, is about um, working out how we can drive adoption across the whole of the built environment. Uh, we see that the early adopters will be in the DT hub, but there'll be an awful lot more to, to follow on. Uh, so those, uh, those different streams have been pulled together uh, into the roadmap, uh, and the, the roadmap is um, available for you to interrogate on the CDBB website. Um, and if I just go to what that actually looks like, it's one of those slides that you should never put onto a slide because it's too complicated, but that's what it looks like. Um, so that's the diagrammatic form. Um, I, I would encourage you to engage with that roadmap because what we're wanting to do uh, is to get those who are um, uh, you know, keen on supporting and uh, have value to add uh, to come in and help us. Uh, there are a number of different working groups being formed in each of the streams. Uh, the door is wide open. You know, this needs to be um, a collaborative engagement. Uh, and so that's, that's the kind of the big picture of, uh, uh, of what we're doing and where the, uh, where the roadmap is. Uh, and I think that you can see that in the, in the heart of the forge, um, Daphne sits. Uh, because uh, Daphne, as I mentioned, hungry for data, uh, but also it provides a kind of an integrating function. It helps to pull things together. Uh, and so what I hope I've shown is that there's um, a good way forward that is nicely aligned uh, and Daphne's at the heart of it. So thank you very much. <laughs>